Welcome to the Estimator Express Getting Started videos. In this series of videos, we'll talk you through the basics of estimating with Estimator Express. In this video, we'll be estimating the brick and block cavity walls. We're starting here in the Job Summary screen. The Job Summary screen contains a list of estimating calculators, or workbooks as they're often called. I added this particular list of workbooks to my estimate when I selected the Extension Demonstration group of workbooks in the new Estimate Wizard. If the workbook you need isn't in the list, you can add it using the Add Workbook button or the Workbooks tab at the top of the screen. There are several different types of external wall workbook available in Estimator Express. In addition to the standard brick and block cavity wall, Estimator Express also contains workbooks for estimating stone-faced cavity walls, block cavity walls and multi-leaf brick cavity walls, for example. For this example extension, we're going to use the brick and block cavity wall workbook. If there are workbooks you really don't need in your job summary, you can delete them using the Delete Workbook button. As the Brick and Block Cavity Walls workbook is already in the list, we simply need to click on it and then click the Open Workbook button to begin estimating the Brick and Block Cavity Walls. When the workbook opens, if you've already done some estimating, you'll see a list of worksheets. If there are no worksheets in the workbook, then you can create a new worksheet by clicking Add Worksheet on the left of the screen. The worksheet name and location are pre-populated. A generic worksheet name is suggested and the location is based on the job description you selected. You can change both the name and the location if you want to use something more specific though. Once you've done that, select a dimensional template. As I'm estimating standard extension walls, I'm going to select the double storey cavity wall option. If you're estimating walls for a new build, you'll need to select a part L template which estimates wider cavities to allow for thicker cavity insulation. Once you've selected the dimensional template, click Confirm. Now the Dimensions Wizard loads up. For walls, this is a four-step process. On page one, you enter the wall dimensions. You can see that here we can enter the wall height, the length of the wall, and the area of any openings. You need to take a moment to think about the best way to estimate your walls. You can estimate each wall individually and click the Gable Dimensions button to estimate gables for any walls with a gable on top. However, if you have any identical walls, you can estimate them at the same time. Walls are only identical if all of the dimensions, including the area of openings, is the same. So if you have two walls which are the same height and width, but one has a window and one does not, they're not identical. Equally, if one has a gable and one doesn't, they're not identical and should be estimated separately. I'm working off a plan for a two-storey apex valley extension, which joins an existing apex roof. There are three different walls to the extension, the front gable wall and two identical side walls. So I'm going to estimate the side walls at the same time and then estimate the front wall. If you're estimating multiple identical walls, enter the dimensions for one wall here and then use the number of identical walls input box to let Estimator Express know how many walls have these dimensions. Let's work our way through the different dimension boxes, changing any dimensions as required. The total height of my walls is 4.6 metres, so I can type that into the height of wall input box. Then you can press the Enter key or the Tab key on your keyboard to move to the next box. The length of each of my side walls is 2.5 metres, so I'm going to enter that here. There are no openings in the side walls, so I can leave the area of openings set to zero. Of course, change the dimensions to make them appropriate for your job. I'm going to set the number of identical walls to two, click into the input box and type two, and then Estimator Express will double the quantities of materials and labor and consequently double the costs. If you need any gables, you can click gable dimensions. The side walls of my extension don't have a gable, so I can click Wall Dimensions to return to the main page of the Dimensions Wizard and then click Next. On page 2 we can look at the foundation dimensions. We can review the depth and the width of the excavation and also the thickness of the concrete. If you switch on the tech tips you'll see that the structural concrete is 0.5 metres deep and there's an option to add a depth of mass concrete if you need it for your job. On the right hand side there are two more boxes. If the excavation is shallow and doesn't need supporting, 
you can set plan construct the excavation to no. Either type in an upper or a lowercase n, either is fine. Underneath this is the bulking of excavated material. This is the multiplying factor by which soil bulks up when it's removed from the ground and put into a skip. Typically, soil increases in volume by one and a half times. This figure goes towards calculating how many skips are required, so leave that set at 1.5. Click Next. Page 3 deals with the footings. This screen has got quite a lot of information on it, so it's a good time to use the other tick box at the bottom of the screen to show the tech labels. We aren't going to change any of these dimensions as they're all fairly typical, but of course you can change them as required for your job. Click into each input box and take a look at the tech tip to give yourself an idea of what each one does. If you're not using trench blocks, you can set this dimension to zero. On the right of the screen you'll see there are options for wall insulation and DPC and those are both set to yes as you'd expect. Once you've finished, click next. Finally, page 4 deals with the plastering and decoration options for the wall. The wall area is calculated from the wall dimensions you entered on page 1. On the right hand side of the screen you'll see there are five options which cover plastering, wall decoration, fitting of skirting board and priming and painting of the skirting boards. Note that the number of skirting boards is set to two as this is a double storey wall, so there's one for the downstairs and one for the upstairs. If we were using a single storey template this would be set to one. So set these options to whatever suits you. Type in Y to include an item or N to exclude it from the estimate. We can ignore the plastering and decoration details of the gable because we don't have any on this occasion, but if your wall has a gable you'd need to review these options too. So for now, click finish. So I've now finished the two side walls. You might find it helpful to change the name of the column so that you can easily identify which column relates to which walls. Click into the column heading and type in the new name. I'm going to call these the side walls. Now I can add the front gable wall of the extension. Click add column. Select the double storey cavity wall template again. Click select. And now I can enter the dimensions for the front gable wall of the extension. I'm going to update the height of the wall again and change this to 4.6 metres. I'm going to set the length of the wall to 4 metres. And I'm going to type in an area of openings of 4.32 metres squared. That's the total area of the two 1800 by 1200 windows which are going into this wall. You need to enter the total area of openings. That's all of the windows, doors and structural openings in the wall. Estimator Express then omits the brickwork, blockwork, insulation, plastering and decoration from this area. As there's a gable on this wall, click Gable Dimensions. As you can see from the Gable Dimension screen, you can estimate a half gable or a full gable. For our example, we're estimating a full gable. On the right hand side you can see two input boxes which correspond to dimensions A and B on the diagrams. For dimension A, type in 4. We're estimating a 4 metre long gable to match the length of the wall. And dimension B, the height of the gable, is going to be 3 metres. There's no opening, so we'll leave that set to zero. Once you've filled in these dimensions, Click on the Wall Dimensions button to go back to the main screen of the Dimensions Wizard. Then click Next. I'm happy with the foundation details as they are, so I can click Next. Review the footing details and then click Next again. As before, set the plastering and decoration details to whatever suits you. Then click Plastering and Decoration to Gable. This screen allows us to plaster, decorate and fit skirting boards to a gable area. As you can see from the pictures, this could be when you're building a house and the attic area is being built as a room. In this example, I'm building a normal flat ceiling, so I don't actually need any gable finishes, as the gable will be hidden away. So I'm going to click Plastering and Decoration to return to the main screen, and then I'm going to click Finish. As before, click into the column heading of the new column, and type in a new name for the wall. In this case, Front Wall. 
press the Enter key to confirm the name change. You can review the dimensions you've entered from the Dimensions tab. Check the number of identical walls, the length and the height of the walls, and the areas of any openings. You can also change any of the foundation details here, and the footing details. If, for example, the customer said they wanted to add a window to a wall, you could enter the area of the opening directly into the Dimensions tab, rather than opening up the Dimensions wizard. If you want to review the resources which have been estimated, click the Resources wizard button. The Resources wizard shows the resources being used in a graphical format. If we click through the pages, you can see which resources are being used for the foundations, for the footings, for the walls, and for the wall finishes. You can swap the resources being used here in the resources wizard, or you can do it from the calculated resources tab. Click finish, and click on the calculated resources tab. In this screen we can see a snapshot of the specification, the section which relates to the brick and block cavity walls. You can see the facing brick which has been specified, the cavity insulation and so on. Of course you can change any of the resources if required. If I click on bricks above DPC, less openings, we can see that a 70 pence facing brick has been specified. This was the brick allowance that I selected when I created the estimate. Looking across the screen, I can see the purchase unit for this item, the build phase, the usage factor, and the estimate rate, which is £42 per square metre. I'm going to swap this brick for a 75 pence facing brick. Once the resource has been selected, it will be highlighted in blue. You can then click the Change Resource button and you can now select an alternative brick from the price book. You may need to scroll down to find the resource you need. Click on the facing brick with a 75 pence allowance and then click select resource. In the edit resource box you need to check the usage factor and the build phase. As I'm swapping one metric brick for another the usage factor of 60 per square meter doesn't need changing. If you do need to change the usage factor, click the calculator button. If I'd just selected an imperial sized reclaimed brick for example, I could change this to say that we need to use 52 facing bricks per square metre. Once you're happy with the usage factor, click OK. I'm happy with the build phase of Brickwork Shell. Here you can see a preview of the estimate rate which is £45 per square metre. Click OK and the 75 pence brick is swapped into the brick and block cavity wall. You can repeat this process to change any resources which might need to be different from the default specification. From the calculated resources tab you can review the information by using the different views. Click show cost summary. This gives a simple breakdown of the costs including the total costs of each item. Now click show quantities. This gives a quick preview of the quantities of resources so you have an idea of what you need to order before you even open any reports. Once you're sure you've entered all of the dimensions you need to enter and are happy with the resources you've specified in your workbook, you can click the Close Workbook button to return to the job summary. Click Yes to confirm the workbook's complete, if indeed it is. You can still go back in and make any changes if needed. The completed marker is just for your own reference. You can type a note in the comments column if you need, for instance if you needed to check a detail before you signed off the workbook. If you want to remove the completed marker, right click and select the toggle workbook complete option. So that's your introduction to estimating a brick and block cavity wall. Thank you for watching this video.